The short answer is the sail plan. A bark is a sail ship with a minimum of three masts, but not limited to three masts. It can have more. The basic sail plan of the bark with three masts is that the foremast and mainmast are fully rigged with square rigs, while the third mizzen mast is fore and aft rigged, usually with a gaff rig. This is the basic minimum layout of the bark. When a bark has four, five or more masts, every successive mast is always fully rigged. It is only the final mizzen mast at the rear that is fore and aft rigged. The bark was the workhorse of the oceans during the age of sails. It is one step down from the fully rigged ship, where a slight reduction in sail power from the full rigging is given up for the extra maneuverability of the fore and aft rig on the mizzen mast. Add to this that a gaff rig is less labor intensive than a full rigging and the advantages are clear. This made the bark a very popular sail plan for larger vessels. The bark was also one of the basic sail plans of the age of sails. These sail plans being in order of size, sloop, schooner, brigantine, brick, bark and full rigged ship. Among the sail plans, the bark along with the schooner and full rigged ship has the special situation that they are not limited to a set number of masts. The bark only has a lower limit of three masts. The bark sail plan was used as an alternative to the full rigged ship, mostly for situations where greater maneuverability was needed. The full rigged ship alternatively was much better at gaining speed and power in the great trade winds and could thus go faster and carry more cargo. It thus became a question of needs whether a bark or full rigged sail plan was used. Downwind, a full rig is superior, but the bark is better at going windward. The bark is not as good at going windward as a schooner, however, and is thus a compromise between the two, much like the Karak that I have made another video about, is a compromise between the Caravel and Cog, both of which I have also made, made videos about. Find links to these videos in the description below. The bark's less labor intensive rigging also meant that it could have a reduced crew and the gaff sail is also cheaper to acquire and maintain than the square rig of full rigged ships. The sail plan was thus chosen for the route that the ship would sail. A bark could be handled with a surprisingly small crew usually around 30, for four masts, but could go lower. The manageable sail plan is also the reason that the bark rigging is much used for training ships, because it trains both in square and fore and aft rigging, and is large enough for a large training crew. The bark rigging was also often used for the huge wind jammers of the late age of sails. The barks brought in large volumes to the larger harbors and ports, where the smaller schooners and brigantines acted as feeder ships for transport to smaller ports and harbors. The use of the term bark for this particular rigging came to be adopted in the late 18th century. Before this, the term had been used by the Royal Navy for ships whose rigging did not fit their usual terminology. As the bark was a large transport vessel sailing on the main ports, it was one of the earlier sailing vessels to start being replaced by steamships on the main routes. The bark could go faster than the steamships of the time, but could not compete with the maneuverability or ability to keep a schedule of the steamships. 
The box remained for some time as bulk carriers of goods that were not dependent on specific arrival. This was only in the windjammer size, however, as they needed to compete on bulk capacity. The steamships were not dependent on the winds or currents to the same degree as the sail ships, so it was a losing game for the barks. Today, the barks mainly remain in the many training ships that still introduce seamen to the use of rigging to transport vessels across the seas. They do still show us just how efficient wind can be at moving vessels fast and without the same need for fuel depots along the way. Were schooners, as I mentioned in an earlier video, connected every little cranny of the oceans, the barks connected the continents across the great oceans.